What's up guys, CB Modder here, back with another video. Now I get asked rather frequently, what exactly should I do with my old PC? As a lot of people do upgrade to a new one, and now they just have an old one sitting around their office or their home or something like that, and they don't exactly have a purpose for it. So today, we're gonna take a look at exactly that, what you should do with an old computer that you may have lying around. Now the first thing you wanna do before you actually repurpose it, is figure out if you need to do any repairs. Whether it has a dud battery being a laptop or a dead hard drive or something similar, it is definitely worth getting it into a working state so you could go ahead and repurpose it. Now if it is a laptop and you're going to be using it as something like a HTPC or something similar which we'll talk about, grabbing a new battery may not necessarily be well necessary, but grabbing something like an SSD or a new hard drive might be more valuable. So whatever your purpose is that you're going to repurpose it to, just make sure it is in a working condition so you get a fairly good experience. But today, we will be going over seven things that you can do with your old computer. So with that being said, let's jump into number one. And the first thing that you may want to consider doing with your old computer is making a file server. Whether it's an old Mac, old PC, or an old Linux machine, all these operating systems have capabilities to share out folders and become a file server. So it's actually really, really easy to implement. First, make sure you have enough storage because if you've only got like 10 gigs free on your drive, it's really not going to be the most handy file server. Then we're just going to make ourselves a new folder, right click on this new folder and go over to properties and then we're going to go ahead and go to the sharing tab, share it out and remember this string. Jump over to another PC or even Mac computer, set up a new network drive and go ahead and enter this string that we just copied from our little PC and boom, now we have a shared file system. Now sure, this isn't exactly going to have the same control and the level of flexibility that a dedicated file server does with a dedicated operating system, but at the end of the day, if you're not going to be reinstalling Windows or reinstalling Mac OS, doing this is probably one of the easiest way to do so. Now whilst we did cover Windows right here, this is also too able to be done on Mac and also to Linux, but do look into a more specific guide for that particular task. Now the benefits of setting up a file server just like this are absolutely unlimited. For me personally, I run a similar setup like this for my network here at home and I go ahead and share whether it be files for the teleprompter right here, video files, audio files and being able to share files between computers without necessarily needing to rely on something like a Google Drive or even a USB memory stick. I just have all the storage of my big server on my laptop, which is really, really handy to do. If you are running file server and you are finding yourself running out of storage, simply just plug in an external drive, or if you are running a desktop, whack in another drive and you are good to go. Something like the WD Elements external hard drives are also to a really great way to add a ton of storage without breaking the bank. And if you want to find out more, check that review right there. But overall, setting up a file server with an old computer is probably one of the best ways you can reuse hardware and actually actually have it serve a really useful purpose in your day-to-day -day life. Coming to number two, we have setting up a media center PC. With Windows 7 and Windows 10 offering decent but definitely capable media center options, grabbing a HDMI and Bluetooth keyboard is definitely gonna be a really great upgrade for your existing TV. With many apps such as Netflix, for example, on the Windows Store, if you wanna go ahead and stream videos, you are set to go. There's also two services like Plex that you can install that will go ahead and store files locally or on that file server you set up and will allow you to stream your videos on through your PC and be a really cool experience. Mac OS also too has a number of applications that are fairly decent for media center streaming, but definitely on the Windows side, there's a few more over here. Not to mention, thanks to the fact that you'll be hooking up a full computer, it will also to be able to browse the web just like your normal computer can, and also to run full desktop apps. Many can also to use this media center PC to stream games thanks to Steam in-home streaming. So now that you've got your brand new computer, you can go ahead and use the processing power of that to run a game, and the network connection to stream it over to your media center PC and boom, now you have a console-like experience with the power of a desktop. And it really just is an overall great upgrade from existing smart TVs as now you have a full computer again powering this desktop experience. Laptops do definitely do a lot better for this scenario as they're a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter and easier to hide in a TV cabinet than a full desktop, but hey, at the end of the day, a computer is definitely a good upgrade. Coming in number three is set up a Linux box. Linux is fast becoming something more and more people are interested in and definitely need to know. With all of the world's supercomputers running Linux and the bash programming language being utilized by more and more workplaces, knowing your way around Linux and the bash ecosystem 
ecosystem is definitely very, very important. Even if you're not planning to work in a supercomputer or even a bash environment, being able to play around with another operating system and really get to know how it works is definitely not a bad thing. And also too, the operating system is free, so it's not like you're spending any money here. Linux is also too a great way if you're looking to get into some more programming, that kind of stuff, as it is very easy to jump on that command line and get around the operating system. So setting up a Linux box is definitely a great option. And because it's no longer your main machine, you can just set it as a full Linux machine, get it up and running and really not have to worry there. So Linux is definitely a really great option. Number four is a network sniffer. Now this is something that's a little bit more specific for certain people, not everyone will need this, but using applications like Wireshark, for example, are a great way to keep an eye on your network. Now again, sure, this is gonna be definitely overkill for a lot of people here, but there's definitely a lot of applications out there that will allow you to set custom alarms, notifications and stuff that will alert you when something comes up on your network, whether that will be a weird packet coming through your system or just something you're not exactly expecting coming through your network. There can be alarm set up and you can get an email, for example, on your phone to let you know when events like this are happening. It's also too a really good way to have a fast and reliable diagnostic system for your network as you would have this running probably 24 seven so you can get 24 seven logs of what's been going on with your network, pull them up and you are really easy able to diagnose what is going on with the system. Again, it is definitely a little bit more specialized and not everybody needs it or wants it or even has an ability to set one of these up. But definitely if you are into networking like me, having a network sniffing computer is definitely gonna be really, really handy here. Coming in number five is using your old computer as a donor PC. Donor PCs are the fastest way to learn about computers and exactly know what is going on under the hood. Pull them apart, put them back together, and they're really, really fun there. You can watch a ton of YouTube videos or attend all the computer classes, but at the end of the day, unless you're hands on with these kind of things, it's really hard to actually go ahead and learn. So using your old computer to pull apart and put back together is one, again, of the fastest ways to learn how computers work. Pull the RAM out and see what happens when you try and boot it, completely pull apart the laptop and put it back together or even a desktop and see what exactly is going on. Pull off parts, put them back on, see how they work and just learn from these experiences. Doing this will also do help you when it comes to troubleshooting down the line. If you do happen to become the computer person for your group of friends, family or so on, having that knowledge of pulling apart a computer and seeing what happens will actually help you down the line as if a part dies in a new computer, you will know the symptoms that have actually come up because you pulled that part out in your old computer and it's actually a really fast way. I guarantee after a few teardowns and rebuilds you'll definitely know so much more and be so much more confident when it comes to working on computers. And personally I would not be here today making YouTube videos about computers if I did not start with pulling apart my first computer and seeing how this thing worked. And besides, it's an old computer. If it breaks, I guess, oh well, it's an old computer and really you're not losing too much out here. But definitely donating this computer to pulling it apart is a really fun way to actually learn. Coming in number six is making a game server. Whether you want to run a Minecraft server, a local CSGO server, or any other games that you do want to play in terms of a server, making yourself a game server or game related server is really, really awesome. Computers from the past five or so years will definitely have enough processing power to actually run these servers as Intel has been well known for not exactly going ahead and pushing the boundaries in the past five or so years. Especially on the desktop side, throw yourself in a bigger drive, maybe even a new video card and boom, that thing is going to be an absolute boss gaming server. Even if you don't want to run a specific game server, running a game client server or even something like a TeamSpeak server where you've got voice chat going on is really, really awesome and having your own dedicated hardware to run a server is again a really nice experience. If you do want to take this to the next step, jump online, buy a domain for 99 cents, point it to your server so now you can access it from the internet. Now have a web server inside of your networking setup. So having a server kind of set up like this is really, really handy. Again, whether you want to run games, voice chats, or even a web server, just setting up some sort of server is really, really powerful here. And coming in at number seven, we have donating that compute power. If you don't need a game server, you don't need a file server or really anything else that I've suggested here, donating that compute power to a charity is really, really awesome. Using something like Folding at Home
Chrome, Boink or etc like that will definitely allow you to use your compute power that's left here to go ahead and help out in the world. Now keep in mind older computers will chew up more power and run louder and hotter so if you are running it in the same room as you do expect those little bits of a downfall here. However if you just want to donate that processing power go ahead and do so but again keep in mind the power and heat costs. And as I mentioned with the game server in the past five or so years processing power has definitely improved but a five year old computer still offers decent processing power so you're not really losing too much here compared to some mid-range modern system. And coming in at a bonus number eight you can go ahead and actually sell it. Now selling it is the fastest way to make a few dollars here and then if your computer is only two or three years old you can actually see a decent return on it providing it's still fairly valuable. This Dell XPS 15 that I do have here today can still fetch some serious cash even though this particular unit is about two and a half to three years old. So whether you sell it yourself on sites like eBay or sell it to a friend or family member, selling it is also to another really good way to make some few extra dollars to put in to your brand new computer. So there we go, my seven tips on things to do with your old computer. Now do keep in mind everything that we did mention today can theoretically be run at the same time. If you want to run a file server and a media center PC and a game server all off the same system, that is totally able to be done. Also too, if you want to set up some virtual machines and run these kind of things as separate machines, that is also too totally possible. However, I do want to recommend keeping in mind security. If you do have, for example, your file server on the same computer as a web server, do keep in mind that that web server is publicly available and someone could get in and move around that server and potentially get to your local file server. Sure it's definitely going to be hard to do but it is theoretically possible so when it comes to security do keep that in mind. Don't keep private documents on the same server as a publicly facing web addressable system. So again do keep security in mind but overall that is things that you can do with your old PC. But let me know down in that comment section if I did miss something what you would do with your old PC. PC. Otherwise guys, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.